When you have Mercury in Gemini, its natal sign, you have an advantage. The advantage is that you are multifaceted. You are also quick-witted and clever. The reason why is because Gemini represents variety and is ruled by Mercury. Mercury is about communication, is about commerce, and is about skills as well. So with having Mercury in Gemini, you could be a jack of all trades because you are just good at a variety of things. Also, Gemini represents movement. So, so those with Mercury and Gemini can often be on the go, often be on the moon, uh, not on the moon, on the move, because these are very mercurial people. So, you know, also Mercury is about our intelligence and in Gemini, it just shows somebody that's a quick thinker, somebody that's clever and inventive. So they get a lot of ideas. And the, the main obstacle that they run into is being spread too thin. Sometimes they can be occupied with many totally unrelated topics or interests. And they can also, you know, um, be having a lot of great ideas or, you know, a lot of inspiration but never following through and committing to a single idea because as soon as another great idea or interest in their life comes up, they tend to switch topics. Uh, that will be counteracted though if you have any earth sign or earth house planets. Uh, but with that being said, now let's talk about a few people that have this placement, which by the way should show some great communicators. And then we'll talk about what this placement means through each of the houses. So depending on which house you have Mercury and Gemini in, you can check the timestamps in the description and skip forward to that. It's also important to note that Mercury is the closest planet to the sun and has the quickest orbit around the sun. So this is why these people can be quick-witted that have uh, Mercury and Gemini, which is its natal sign. Um, and... Also, they could just be quick people in general. Like they can be great at multitasking. They can switch subjects quickly, um, switch focus quickly, or just go about tasks and go about their day like really quickly. And this can lead to excessive busyness. But they tend to handle the the workload or the the um, the busyness that comes from from being fast pretty well so um another thing about these people is they will often be connected to their phones like often on the internet often in the middle of multiple interactions sometimes even and that is that is just coming from this quick-witted nature of mercury they just want to do everything fast they just they just want to get to the point of things and make things happen and they're they're power connectors nikola tesla has this Play, uh, had this placement Tupac Shakur has this placement Prince the musician has this natal uh, placement or had it Tom Cruise has this placement Marilyn Monroe Angelina Jolie Prince William of Wales Adele the singer Chris Brown the 14th Dalai Lama Audrey Hepburn Paul McCartney, Meryl Streep, Che Guevara, Juliet, Julie Gayet, Jeffrey Dahmer, Russell Brandt, who is a, a communicator, a public speaker by profession. We have Bob Dylan and many more that have this placement. Uh, there's a few other musicians like 50 Cent, um, Enrique Iglesias. And just a lot more that I have not listed in general, a lot more celebrities. Now, with that being said, let's talk about what it means through each of the houses. So, if you have Mercury and Gemini in the first house, which is about our identity, our personality, 
and our appearance even. For one, this shows that you are a fast individual. Not only are you fast-witted, but with Mercury being the quickest planet to orbit the sun and representing speed. Even in the mythology, Mercury was the messenger god with wings um, attached to his ankles. And he would just fly around and deliver things in an instant. So those that have it in their first house, they will actually have this potential to, to be like quick physically. Like they, they can be, they will be the best at sports that require speed or events in the, in the um, track and field that require speed. The other thing about them is that they're natural communicators. That's just a natural part of that their identity. And their identity can be more vague or like more indefinite because they are scattered people. You know, they ha and they are jacks of all trades. So they kind of have multiple interests and they settle for just being a natural communicator or a natural connector in terms of, you know, how they think of their identity. So it's kind of hard to pinpoint them to one exact thing, but they're the person that's always either connecting or always talking or always involved in the newest opportunity or their newest interest of their, of their own. So next, this leads us to Mercury and Gemini in the second house. These are natural opportunists and business people. These individuals, they get ideas for how to make money. They also spend money quite frequently and quite easily. This can create confusion and um, disorder when it comes to their personal finances. Because Mercury is uh, uh, in a mutable sign here. And mutable signs are disorganized. They're all about change. Mutable comes from the word mutation. So it's about change. And... Air is about connection. So this is a mutable air sign. Um, and air is, is about the movement of stuff. It's about in information. So there's a bunch of like transactions when it comes to their finances and it can get, you know, confusing. Uh, and anyway, that's just one meaning. But generally, uh, these people are good at business. They can be very creative as well. And this is the type of placement that can create a singer because the second house is ruled by Venus. Venus is about beauty, quality, worth, and talents. And now with this planet of communication here, it will have a positive effect on one's voice and one's ability to communicate pleasantly or creatively. So next, this leads us to Mercury and Gemini in the third house. These individuals are multitaskers and multifaceted people. And the third house represents our mind and, you know, how we think, how we speak. Uh, these people are just great conversation makers or they're good. They're good at improvising as well. So they could be great sales salespeople as well because they are able to improvise towards people's questions when it comes to selling something to them, whether that's a car or another object. And they're able to still, you know, uh, maintain a positive, you know, image of that thing. So a lot of times uh, those that have Mercury in Gemini in the third house, they manifest situations requiring improvisation of their mind when it when it comes to their life. And, you know, this could play a role in the career that they choose or like just their day to day life and how they uh, interact and make. Uh, and maintain friendships is like they're they're always improvising also they'll always be on the go they'll always be taking short trips you know uh they love going for walks they love driving around um they're good at delivery based careers so you know amazon deliveries um postal service they're great at those types of careers because these are mercurial people they'll be the quickest of the of the employees when it comes to their delivery route. So that is Mercury in Gemini in the third house. So this is double home signs for Mercury because it likes being in Gemini and it's at home in the third house. So next, uh, this will lead us to 
Mercury and Gemini in the fourth house. The fourth house is about our internal selves. It's a house that is representing privacy. So it rules our home life. It rules our emotions. It rules things that are sensitive and close to our hearts. So that's why it represents family. And it represents investments as well. So it's where we either invest money or we invest time. For one, those that have Mercury in their fourth house, uh, when it comes to their investments, so like stocks and cryptos and real estate, they have a tendency to trade those things a lot, to buy and sell them. Um, because the fourth house generally represents things that we hold on to for the long term. And things that appreciate with value because it's about growth. It's ruled by cancer. Even even cancer in a medical term, it's it's a growth in the body that is uncontrolled. So when it comes to stocks, unlike the usual investor who would tend to stay safe and want to like just say, uh, keep their uh, stocks or like save them, uh, these are the people that are always trading their investments, always trading their stocks. And that's just for those that invest. But uh, in general, um, in the fourth house, Mercury shows somebody that has a lot of internal dialogue. They ask themselves a lot of questions and they're very intellectual about their emotions. They feel things at, through a logical standpoint and they filter their feelings through a logical standpoint. This also makes them quite intuitive because they're just they're smart and their thoughts lead them to realize things that are deep or like realize the answer to long-held questions that they or other people have had and so in general the fourth house just shows aspects of ourselves that people don't necessarily see on the surface um as you know as opposed to the ascendant which is about what people see on the surface and the, and this is why the ascendant is square to the fourth house because they're totally different the fourth house wants to stay unseen basically uh it shows with having mercury here that the aspect of yourself that people don't necessarily see is your your intellectual side they don't see how much internal dialogue that you have and you might be a person of fewer words because when it comes to the topic of information which is represented by gemini and mercury you're somebody that absorbs information rather than necessarily wants to speak all the time so another thing is that those with displacement are very observant and they're just great with information because the Gemini aspect of the placement means that they process everything that they observe and they're very quick at it. So they read people very well and, you know, make a general consensus or feeling about every situation that they encounter. So this makes them quick on their toes and like makes them clever and fast witted. So next this leads us to Mercury and Gemini in the fifth house. This shows somebody that is a natural commentator, a natural chatterbox a natural communicator with the exception of cases where the throat chakra is blocked in this individual or they have shyness or insecurities from other placements but naturally they have this desire to express and for their opinions to be heard furthermore the fifth house is the fixed firehouse fixed signs are about a constant way of being that's why they stay fixed and fire the element represents action or energy so having a placement in a in the fifth house which is a fixed fire sign just shows a constant energy a constant action that you do and gemini is about communication mercury is about communication so out of all the people like the people with displacement in their charts these are the people that are constant chatterboxes you know always expressing their opinions with the exception of you know having other placements that make that might make them more introverted or something. Uh, but furthermore, they are also humorous. They have a good sense of humor. And they will be good at acting. Because these are quick-witted individuals. They're good at improvisation. Just in general, with Mercury and Gemini, it, it shows people that think fast on their toes. And that's why I was saying they can be constantly involved in many different streams of thought, many different interests. Or they could constantly be on their phone in the midst of many different co ongoing conversations. But anyway, um, this improvisation skill then applies to the field of acting and performance when Mercury is in the fifth house. 
So these people would never have a stutter or a pause in their performance. And they're also, you know, they have this cleverness and this jokester side of themselves that makes them uh, entertaining because the fifth house is about entertainment. So these people love to have fun, but they can be a little bit superficial. You know, if things are not going to gain validation, they might not express that opinion or they might only express things from a standpoint of being entertaining, entertaining or having fun. But they might have difficulty uh, talking about serious, more serious topics or even, you know, speaking about something that might require other people to listen respectfully. So next this leads us to Mercury and Gemini in the sixth house. These are very sharp individuals. And they are more practically minded, more practically oriented. The sixth house is about tasks and responsibilities. It's about our work life and our routine and our habits. So having Mer Mercury and Gemini here. For one, uh, Mercury and Gemini is usually scattered and multifaceted. And they um, can be multitasking a lot. However, in the sixth house, it's not really necessarily out of, you know, laziness that they are like this or like it's not necessarily uh, um, from an intentional point of view. It's just coming for, for these people from the fact that they're so busy and they're so productive. So like, in other words, you know, um, what makes these people so busy and overloaded sometimes and doing so many things is just the fact of they're so routine oriented and they're so efficiency or productivity oriented you know and if it wasn't for responsibilities and things that they wanted to like physically accomplish which is represented by the earth house you know um sixth house you know if it wasn't for those earthly things that they wanted to do or those meaningful acts or tasks that they need to complete they probably wouldn't be so you know busy or distracted all the time um because they're just very to the point people they're very to the point in their way of thinking they like to uh to be organized and and productive as as possible when it comes to their thoughts uh this placement will show a tendency to handle stress well actually, because the sixth house is about worries, stress, perfectionism, and attention to detail. And Mercury and Gemini is gifted with the ability to improvise and this quickness that um, is a natural talent. So the ability to improvise allows them to handle stress as well. However, there's a limit to, to how much stress can be handled nonetheless. So don't my advice is don't overwhelm overwhelm yourself, you know, too much with like with uh, too many responsibilities. Even if you do want to be productive, you know, it might it might not be healthy if you're still feeling, you know, stressed. So anyway, that is Mercury and Gemini in the sixth house. Next, let's talk about Mercury and Gemini in the seventh house. The seventh house is relatable. It's about relationships. It's about how we react and respond to others and also how we get favorable consequences or reactions from other people. It's all about seeing eye to eye and it's about business agreements um, and it's about gaining support or agreement. So those with Mercury and Gemini in the seventh house are great at gaining the support or agreement of other people. They're very persuasive communicators. And the other thing is that they will be great at improvising because they have this ability to react to information quickly. The seventh house is about reactions and responses. It opposes the first house. The first house is about action. The seventh house is about reaction. That's what other people are to ourselves when it comes to action. They are reactions to what we say or do. That's what they do. So Having uh, Mercury here in your seventh house shows, you, shows that you always know how to respond to every situation. Um, you could be a little bit of a smart aleck or a smart ass for that reason. But it's it's uh, it's not something, you know, f fictional. You know, you're actually quite smart. So it, it's not something intentional. I mean, like people might perceive you that way, but you're not actually trying to be a smart ass. You're just quick to respond to everything. So that is Mercury. 
in uh, Gemini in the seventh house. Th this will also, you know, make them quite relatable in terms of their communication. And the thing that makes you the most relatable to others is your mouth, your communication, your speech, you know. Anyway, uh, next this leads us to Mercury and Gemini in the eighth house. These individuals are opportunists, kind of like Mercury in the second house. Because both the second and the eighth house oppose each other and they have to do with finances as one of their themes. But the eighth house is more intuitive and is more like beneath the surface subjects. It's everything that is hidden, obscure, or any, anything that's in the shadows. So a lot of things that we don't want to look at or face tend to find themselves in the eighth house. That's why it represents shadow work. That's why it's also a malefic house and it represents situations of high pressure. For one, those with Mercury in Gemini in the 8th house handle pressure very well because Gemini and the placement of Mercury is showing that they're quick-witted and they're multifaceted um, and they're, they're good at improvisation. The other thing, though, is Gemini is very curious. The 8th house is about hidden or obscure subjects or private subjects, you know, secrets. So these people are... Uh, are gossipy they can be gossipy and even if they're not outwardly gossipy because they might understand that that might be perceived negatively they just have a gossipy mind like their mind asks the questions that they probably shouldn't and you know when it comes to their communication as well their words can cut deep or like they can't ask very great questions because the the eighth house is about secrets it's about the unknown or they can ask very personal or deep questions so they're, they're good conversationalists and they, they have a great understanding of psychology. And so used in a negative sense, this placement can show people that naturally notice loopholes and no, notice uh, uh, opportunities to scam or deceive. But in a positive light, um, this placement would just show somebody that has a great business mind because they notice or they, they notice opportunities and they have a great understanding of human psychology you know and they're clever and they're good communicators they're good with using any form of media really where there's a message intended to be sent so anyway this makes it good at promoting products and stuff like that so um next this leads us to mercury in gemini in the ninth house these are great teachers these people have a naturally philosophical mind but it's like their mind never fully jumps to a conclusion. It's just always considering the possibility of things. Their mind is constantly asking questions about the truth. The night house is about the truth. And so this is what makes these Mercury placement people particularly philosophical or interested in belief, languages, religions, and other cultures. Because usually Mercury and the planet gem uh the sign gemini do not have a strong sense of faith they don't necessarily they aren't necessarily belief based people because the third house and the sign gemini op opposite are opposite to uh the ninth house and sagittarius so uh anyway uh gemini and mercury shows the tendency to ask a lot of questions so this makes it hard to have faith because they always have this need for a logical explanation. But when Mercury is in the ninth house, it shows people that are interested in philosophy, religions, and possibilities, uh, possibilities for the truth or like uh, ex possible explanations for the truth because they like to ask questions about those things. So it's not so much that they believe information or they believe like religions or beliefs. It's like they just like to think about those things. And overall, this makes them very long-winded conversationalists as well because they can have this interest in philosophical discussions or discussions about foreign policy, politics, beliefs, etc. And yeah, and overall, they're very convincing and persuasive people as well. Uh, because the ninth house gives their Mercury placement that gift. And the reason they're so persuasive is because they're so well cultured and they seem to know a lot of things. And when they communicate, they always 
give a logical explanation for a, a, a belief or a piece of information. So next, this, this leads us to Mercury and Gemini in the 10th house. This will show somebody that has a very multifaceted career and a career where they constantly have to ad adapt to new circumstances. The positive of having Gemini in the 10th house or at least having a Gemini placement in the 10th house is it brings a lot of variety to your professional life. The negative is that it brings a lot of stress because of this need to like change focus a lot or adapt to new circumstances, new trends or new societal um, dispositions. So the other thing is a lot of these people will find themselves in careers of media and communication plays a big part a uh, big role in their success or you know their public image these can be natural commentators or pod podcasters or like people that have a career or a profession or an image that's very dependent on their communication or that's dependent on gossip and information uh, so this is why a lot of these people will gravitate to news related careers and um Another thing, though, is on a personal level, since the 10th house shows our public image and our reputation, having Mercury here in uh, Gemini will show that throughout your life, you've had a history of people gossiping about you. Uh, people will tend to enjoy gossiping about you because you it might be just interesting uh, when Mercury is in your 10th house. So obviously that's a negative, but on the upside, this contributes to your popularity um, or towards people knowing you. So it goes to say like the the uh, the age old saying, which is that all publicity is good publicity, you know, at least when it comes from a popularity standpoint or from a word of mouth standpoint. So next, this leads us to Mercury and Gemini in the 11th house. The 11th house is an air house. Air houses are, are about connection information and and movement especially the movement of information from one source to another and gemini is an air sign so this mercury placement is very interactive and socially oriented uh these individuals will be the power networkers of the zodiac meaning they have that trait that i mentioned at the beginning which is a tendency to always find themselves in the midst of multiple ongoing tasks or conversations especially on their phone or any source of media um they, these are the types of people that will have multiple tabs open on their computer at all times um, and sometimes to like an extreme and anyway since the 11th house is about networking this placement gives uh the individual a lot of contacts and in order to maintain those contacts or to make the most of them, they have this uh, need or this tendency to be quick-witted or to like constantly improvise and respond to new conversations and stuff like that. So um, the 11th house is really about our associations and our friend groups. So these people will always find themselves in some sort of group chat that is ongoing or like on their phone um, on some some app. Or on multiple apps sometimes. They'll have different group chats. Uh, but they just like to communicate amongst a group. They see their opinion as one of many opinions. Because the 11th house is very humble. It opposes the house of ego. Which is the 5th house. So um, these people kind of look for multiple opinions on a, on a subject or on a perspective. And when they speak, they just see their opinion as very important and meaningful because it's almost like a vote, you know, and like it's one opinion of many opinions, but basically every opinion counts, you know, and that's how these people see their communication in a way, or it's like a subconscious thing. Uh, they'll feel most comfortable speaking in group situations and like they, these are the people that can be the life of the group when it comes to communication because it's like their energy uh which is coming from this placement, it, it activates inside a group situation. So they'll stimulate a lot, a lot of conversation between people. And 
uh, these people would be good on podcasts as well where there's like a group discussion because they will always uh, want to contribute by pitching in an opinion or at least a question. Um, and anyway, the uh, overall, like some astrologers consider Mercury exalted in Aquarius uh, or, the, or the 11th house. And this is because it will represent intelligence and somebody that that is firm in their opinions. Uh, because they have some sort of solid reasoning. That's what Aquarius is about. It's about forms of solid reasoning. The difference with the other air signs and the other air houses, which are not the sign Aquarius or the 11th house, is that their reasoning may not even be necessarily solid. Meaning when it is questioned, it might change, you know. Um, so those that have Aquarius, they're very good with math and they're like, or, I mean, 11th house, too. They're very good with math. They're very good with, like, equations or, like, a form of thinking that's going to stay true for a long time. Or that's, that's like, a fact, you know, that can't be denied. So, anyway, uh, that's the last trait about Mercury in Gemini in the 11th house is that they're, they're quite intelligent as well and, and quick-witted. Um, and they're good in social circumstances, good at networking. Last but not least, this leads us to Mercury and Gemini in the 12th house. This is another placement that will show creatives, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps even singers. Um, I know Chris Brown um, has Mercury and Gemini in the, in the house that's right next to this one, which is the 11th house. Um, but you would find a lot of creative people that have uh, Mercury and Gemini in their 12th house. The 12th house is about the future. It's about potential. It's about imagination. It's about possibilities. Um, and many people consider the 11th house to be about the future, but the 12th house is right next to it. And it has, uh, I can confirm it has a lot to do with the future because it's about everything that's non-physical. Everything that's not real yet and things that have potential. So uh, those that have Mercury and Gemini in the third house, these are very inspired individuals. And they're always thinking about possibilities or thinking about what's possible to create. Uh, they get a lot of ideas. Key word because uh, Gemini represents ideas when it, com when it comes to their imagination or their creativity or when it comes to what's possible. These individuals are also very sensitive to communication and information because the 12th house is, is sensitive, um, is compassionate, and it's intuitive as well because it connects a lot of things. It's all about connections. It's a water house. Furthermore, uh, the reason why those that have Mercury in the 12th house are sensitive to words and sensitive communication is because they will connect a lot of things to themselves. They'll connect a lot of words that people say to themselves and to their self-worth. The 12th house is about our subconscious and it's about our self-concept. So anyway, um, those that have Mercury in the 12th house in Gemini, they like to think about subconscious topics. They, they also um, like to think about spirituality and they like to think about, you know, the overarching message of things. So in general, since Mercury is in an air sign, they have a logical and and persuasive way of communicating messages or like a story too. They're good at describing their imagination. So this can show storytellers or people that want to be creative writers. Um, and generally, they're just good at painting an overarching message for things or thinking about that. So this is what makes them so spiritual because they will see, they will notice or see certain events in their life or certain information out in the world and they will have this tendency to connect the overarching meaning in some in the form of some sort of synchronicity they'll they will be able to point out the synchronicities of of life um so yeah these are also natural artists i would say and they could be good at poetry singing music or any any form of creative media uh, because Gemini represents media. With that being said, that's Mercury and Gemini through each of the houses. Peace.